guys, I'm here to show you the books I have recently borrowed from the library. I have become, or I have once again become an avid user of my library. Last month I showed you the books that I had borrowed and you seemed to enjoy that so I thought I would continue with that whilst I'm still borrowing quite a lot of books and I do have another nine books I believe here that I have out from the library and plan on reading so um, I wanted to share them with you and, and of course encourage you to use your library, it is a wonderful magical place. <laughs> but let's start with the graphic novels that I have out from the library. The first one is On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden. This is a graphic novel that I saw over on Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Musings channel. Um, she was hauling it um, and was excited to read it and she got me excited to read it. The artwork and colours look stunning so I am hoping that that will be a really engaging element of this one. But from what I gather this one is light science fiction. It's more about the relationship between two girls and about one of them travelling to the end of the universe to reclaim her lost love. I think it is a queer relationship that's depicted and I think it also started off as a webcomic from what I saw on Goodreads but regardless it looks beautiful, sounds beautiful and yeah I plan on reading this one. We then have one I have already read and that is Aquacorn Cove by Katie O'Neill. This is a middle grade graphic novel and it is gorgeous. Love, love, love the art. This is like so in my wheelhouse, this art. So, so cute. And this is basically a lovely story about um, a girl who's lost her mother. Um, they've gone to visit her aunt to do some repairs to the, uh, her aunt's local community where she originally grew up because there's been a natural disaster. And it's all about the environment, uh, but with like a magical twist. So it, it emphasises the importance of uh, like the ecosystem and the ocean and taking care of the ocean and the coral reefs and um, they meet these creatures called aquacorns which are these like lovely sort of magical unicorns that live under the sea um, but this will have been or is going to be in my mid month wrap up so I'll say more about it then but Regardless, I thought it was a lovely little book. Then we have another one that has queer elements and that is Blue is the Warmest Colour by Julie Marrow. This is translated from French. I also believe there's a movie adaptation of this. But it is almost entirely in black and white except for the pops of blue on one of the characters here. And it's basically the story of Clementine, a young girl discovering her sexuality um, in high school in France. So I think that that could be something really incredible. Lastly for graphic novels though is Night Lights by Lorena Alvarez. This is another one which falls into the children's middle grade category and I originally saw this one on my friend Sana Books and Quills channel and she was recommending it and the artwork just looked stunning. Look at that. Beautiful, so, so into this. It's about a little girl who draws these magical creatures that come to life um, during her dreams when she's asleep and then a new girl comes to town and is fascinated by her drawings. However, I think there's quite like a sinister turn in the story. Like, it is one of those books that's actually a little bit darker than you might expect it to be, so I'm intrigued to see what that sinister twist is going to be. I then have one non-fiction book before I move into the four novels I have out from the library, and that is Trans, a memoir by Juliet Jacks. This is, I think, pretty self-explanatory from the title. It is all about the author Juliet Jacks' experience uh, coming out as trans, transitioning um, and just sort of like existing as a trans person in the 21st century. I've heard great things about this memoir so I'm, I'm really hoping to love it. We then have, like I mentioned, four novels. The first one of which is The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield. This is a kind of like literary a uh, dark mystery from the sounds of it. I've never read anything by Diane Setterfield before um, but it is about this house called Angelfield House which has been abandoned and forgotten and it was once owned by this family who some dark things happened amongst this ho this house holds dark secrets and we now have a woman called Margaret Lee uh, in the angel field coming to investigate the past of this house and kind of uncover some of its mysteries. Then of course there had to be some fantasy and um, this one is a young adult book and it is The Iron King by Julie Kagawa. This is another book that I have been hearing about basically since I joined booktube so for about seven years now. That's right isn't it this book came out yes this book came out in 2011 so that is perfectly possible. I'm pretty sure I've been hearing about this book for seven years now and I finally picked up a copy from the library. I believe it is is um, a kind of fae fantasy novel. Essentially our protagonist Megan believes that she's a perfectly ordinary girl living in uh, 
the 21st century and it turns out she's actually the daughter of a fae king and um, people want to use her as a political pawn. Then a book that I more recently discovered from recommendations on booktube and that is The Dark Days Club by Alison Goodman. This one is set in London 1812 and I'll just read you this little paragraph which says Lady Helen Rexall is set to step into Regency society and find a husband, but this step will take her from glittering ballrooms and the bright lights of Vauxhall Gardens into a shadowy world of demonic creatures and deadly power. Drawing her into this underworld is Lord Carlston, a man of dubious reputation and infuriating manners. He believes Helen has a destiny beyond the ballroom, a sacred duty to protect humanity. This immediately reminds me of Gail Carragher's uh, Parasol Protectorate series which I love. It again is set in the 1800s and it has um, kind of paranormal mystery elements so I was so up for trying another series that falls within that category. And then last but not least is Notes of a Crocodile by Queen Maljin. Um, this is a translated queer novel. I recently asked for some recommendations of queer translated work which is also why I picked up Blue is the Warmest Colour on um, a TBR I did for the Queer Lit Readathon and this one came up. It was recommended by a couple of people in fact and it did sound very interesting so as soon as I saw my library had it I uh, reserved it. But it's basically a queer coming of age story for a group of misfits living in 1980s Taipei. Other than that I don't know a terrible amount um, but you know it comes highly recommended, it's meant to be very beautiful um, and um, insightful so I'm definitely going to give it a shot. But those are the books I have recently borrowed from the library. I would love to hear from you if you have read or are interested in reading any of them at all. Have you borrowed anything exciting from the library yourself recently? Do let me know. But until next time, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye guys!